So I'll invite Mo back up as well, and then I'll sit on the, on the far side, because it's not about me. Um, cool. So for everyone online as well, you can ask your questions in the chat, and yeah, for those questions, we'll come up to Dr. Sheeny and make sure we get those answered as well. To start with, anyone here in the audience want to ask Mo or Christina any questions? We've got the first question right up there. Just one second. Just wait until Watch this. the, like really cool the about mic comes. Well. It's going to be the coolest one that you've seen so far. So ask your question in with the mic so that we can actually hear it online as well. Uh, Mo, during our last conference in Fantasy Wings, uh, you said that when you were young, you used to watch this one YouTuber who like, really simplified problems for you, yeah. and they inspired you. Who was that YouTuber? So, for context, um, I told once a story similar to this, but I dipped into a specific YouTuber that I used to watch called Smarter Every Day. He still makes videos to now, but he literally goes to like, the most cool... Like, he makes something that seems so disinteresting, absolutely fascinating because he explains to you how it all works. So Smarter Every Day, there's a guy called Destin in America, shout out to him, because mm -hmm. I basically try and do what he does for like Heathrow and like aviation, because he taught me that. And like I said, it's just about seeing how you got here and see how you can do more of that for the next people. Keeping the ladder down, as yeah, you said. Keeping the ladder down, which is super important that you saw someone doing it already. A lot of times we think we need to be the first person to do a lot of things, but usually there's always someone somewhere doing something similar to what you already want to do and if you pick up as many gems from there that yeah, that's always a good thing to do any other questions in the room got one question over there just wait for i think you can actually you throw, throw it, it. Throw so it. You have to catch it you basically said you throw or mic yeah. go on dash it yeah go on well when you say dash it you know okay. yeah oh, nice Cheers. can you hear me oh, yeah. yes well yeah. uh, first of all thank you for the talks they're really inspiring i have a question for mo uh, you mentioned not to listen to people sometimes, or some people who are naysayers in your life. Where do you draw the line between being like ambitious and not listening to people, and being like delusional, or going for something that's out of reach? That's a very good question. I think that's actually very important that we dip into that as well. Um, because a lot of people will give you advice because they think it's, that it's in your best interest. So my uncle was trying to look out for me by telling me, don't go down this path. It wasn't being malicious. But what's important is you have to be careful who you take advice from because there are people who've never done what you want to do who will still try and give you advice on how to do it. So when you do take advice from people, ask yourself, are they in a position or are they, do you think they have the wisdom that is necessary for me on this journey or actually are they just making stuff up? Because a lot of people will just make stuff up because that's what they think is right. But ask your questions to people who've been in those positions where they've gone through that path. And this is why opportunities like this are so important. Because you have people in the room who've been down this path. They've done what you want to do. And they are going to be able to give you the best advice that aligns with, it, with, what, with what you want to do. But when it comes to like, where does the dry line draw between ambition and delusion? I think be as ambitious as you want. Like, the world is changing and evolving in ways that we've never seen before. Yeah. And there are going to be jobs in the future that currently aren't even a figment of anyone's imagination. So, yo, shoot for the stars. That's a good question. Up there, but I think you're going to have to throw. Well, yeah, yeah. right here. Oh, amazing. Good catch. Thank you. Um, so, um, Christina, you mentioned that you were a chartered engineer. Yeah. So, like, obviously, after you do your degree, it says that you have to have, like, four years of experience. I'm not sure how many years of experience. But it's kind of a little bit wish wishy-washy after that. How necessarily do you get to that stage where you get chartered? So I think what's most important is taking a look at the competencies that are required and filling in against those where you've done bits of work that meet those competencies. And that highlights as well gaps that you've got, which I put in my personal development plan, saying I've got these gaps and I need them to achieve my chartership. Um, but it also shows things that you've done that you may not have realised as you go through the time, um, rather than waiting till late, later on to fill it in and trying to remember what you did. If you do it as you go, then you can show yourself things that you've done and actually, yeah, actually, I've actually achieved all this. Maybe I'm missing one or two things here or there, um, but that'll really help. I always found it hard to document as I was going yeah. along, but it's the best, it's the best way to do it, isn't it, way. in some way. We'll take a question from online or for at least, but yeah, someone might have to throw you uh, that mic as well. 
Ja. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was going to happen, don't worry. <laughs> of getting into engineering that isn't just about going to university? Yeah, I mean, BAE offers a lot of different, just, I mean, just BAE because I work there, but they offer a lot of different ways in schemes. Um, I've got some summer interns working for me now. They do apprenticeships, graduate schemes, industrial placements. They do a lot of things that I didn't really know about when I was younger and that I wish I'd done. Um, I, I work with a lot of apprenticeships and graduate, like apprentices and graduates who you know, if you think about it, if the company is investing in you, they're going to want to push you hard. So, you know, there's great opportunities if you go in through those schemes as well as going in direct like I did. Yeah. Could How I, about could you, I add? Yeah, I think when, when I look at it from a bird's eye view, it seems like it splits up into three categories-ish. You have an apprenticeship route, a degree route, like a degree apprenticeship route. That's kind of like the... the the headlines of how to get into the industry, but each of those depends on what skill set you possess. So it's not about, oh, what do I want to do? It's more about what kind of person am I? If you're a hands-on, you love being hands-on, you love being in the operation, you don't want to sit in a classroom, you really want to learn by touching stuff and feeling it, then an apprenticeship is an amazing opportunity that oftentimes people from our communities really overlook because it doesn't come with a degree. But the director of engineering at Heathrow Airport started off on an apprenticeship. Like, it's just as credible, you join the industry, you learn, you earn, you're not in debt, all these things are amazing. Mm. But if your know, mum at home says, now nah, you have to have a degree, then degree apprenticeships are there for that reason. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're competitive, but you're talented. You know what I mean? You're talented and you're genuinely, genuinely. One thing that shocks me is how eager companies are to hire talent, mm. but how fearful the talent is to apply for the company. So it's like, there's like this, it doesn't add up. It's like the companies genuinely want you to apply, but you sometimes don't believe you're good enough. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and apply for the stuff that might seem hard and put your best foot forward. And genuinely, you can get it. You can get it. I think just say what, what Mo said there, I was too scared to apply for these because I didn't think I was good enough. Um, so I, did, I never did that. But then I struggled to find a job because I didn't have any experience. Um, and one thing I would say as well is a lot of these schemes offer you the chance to move into different areas, so you get to try a lot of areas before you decide what you want to do, which is really great because it's kind of try before you buy, isn't it really? And you get paid to do it, so it's yeah. great, great opportunities. It's that open buffet. Yeah. Always keep in mind, like, how many things can I taste before I specialise? Yeah. Keep your options open. Question just back there. There's one there. I think, yeah, there's one uh, over there's there. One on the oh, no, side. don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Too far. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Um, you both mentioned placement years, and currently I'm on one right now. Something I'm struggling with is getting um, the best experience. I feel it's there's a structure to it. So, do you have any advice in like getting the most out of placements in general? It's a great question. Who wants to go first? Go first. I was going to say, do you have like a plan in place for while you're doing that placement? Is there some objectives and, and things in place? It's in continuous improvement and it's with Lean, Sigma 6 and stuff like that. So um, you have to get those things round, <laughs> around your head before you can start diverging into other departments. So I just want to make the most of the year I'm taking out of uni. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't have that in place, I would say put some things in place, some aims, some goals that you want to achieve. Speak to your line manager, say, I want to do these things. Um, I don't know whether you have kind of monthly one-to-ones arranged with your manager to kind of discuss those kind of things, some development opportunities and things like that as well. So that might be something to put in place and that'll help also feed into your line management that maybe you're not getting the best right now, but maybe there's some things that can be done and agreed between you both to make that better. And can I add to that? So speaking to your manager is great, but genuinely sometimes your manager might not be the best person to speak to because I've, I've been in positions where your manager blocks your potential rather than empowers you because I don't know. I don't know why they do it, but they do. So what I, what I would do if I was in your position is I would literally look at the organizational chart, pick out the people who you think are interesting, who you think could be your allies, like people who you've seen in the corridor who seem genuinely friendly, 
people who are nice, like people that you genuinely would love to get to know and learn about them. And put in, like, and genuinely, like, it's, it's, it's hard. Like, the first time you want to send one of these emails, you get really scared. But write up an email. Be like, listen, I'm really interested to learn more about what you do. Could we spend 30 minutes catching up over a coffee or over a Teams call? I want to learn more about what you do. Remember, you're doing Lean Six Sigma. So what you're, what you're able to offer them as, like a, as, a, as a service is how can I make your processes more efficient and make your life easier? So pitch the conversation in that way where it's like, I want to learn more about what you do to see how I could potentially help you. No manager is going to say no to that. But what it also means is that you get to learn about what other parts of the business are doing. You get to make allies in different parts of the business. And potentially, how, how long of the placement have you got left? Uh, I just started this month. Amazing. Yeah. Good. So that means, come four months down the line, they might realize, wow, we have this talented person we're not utilizing. We want to put them in a different team. When I was working in, in the airline, I got moved over to the procurement team for about two months because they were like, they couldn't keep up with how many parts we had to order from around the world. Yeah. I created like a spreadsheet of like all the different suppliers, where, how much they're charging for each part. And I found myself on the Boeing website putting in like thousands of pounds worth of orders for spare parts. Like, and, I, and I literally only got put in there because I was proactive in like reaching out to different departments to learn about what they do. Think about what you want out of this long term. Think about the open buffet and go out there and grab it because nobody's going to give it to you. Genuinely, fill up your diary with catch-ups from people across the whole business. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to do that. I did that with like, our engineering director and, and lots of people within the company that I'd norm, you know, normally be like, I can't speak to that person. Yeah. <laughs> but then that led to my new job, so I don't know what will happen. Creating opportunities yeah. yet again. All right. So we've got probably one more question. I'll try and squeeze your one in as much as possible, but it's going to come from online first. So a question from BAN Cube. Um, it's for Christina, but I'm sure you can both chime in. Um, it can be really easy to make connections, like when you're networking, those first connections. But how do you maintain those connections? Yeah, that, that's a really interesting one, actually. Um, maintaining, so obviously there's ways of maintaining it through social media, um, obviously staying in touch with people. Um, kind of commenting and, and kind of messaging, seeing how people are doing. Maybe, you know, if you've networked with people in the company, sometimes it's like a follow-up chat that you might agree to do. So maybe we'll tie in in a couple of months and see how things are going, things like that. Um, and yeah, just kind of keeping in touch that way. And it, which can be hard, especially when you're kind of balancing day job, life, and trying to keep in touch with people. Uh, but also, Especially in engineering, you'll find it's quite a small world in terms of networking. So you see a lot of the same people generally at kind of these events. Um, a lot of people I know that I see kind of all the time. So all the can, time. <laughs> all you can keep in touch that way as well. So yeah, there's, there's different ways of doing it. I don't know if you've got anything. Quick one. Yeah. Quick one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to get what? Yeah. Basically, if you create content on social media it's proactive networking because the next time someone sees you, they're like, wow, you're doing so much. You haven't even spoken to them in like two years, but they're in the, you are in their mind. But vice versa, when you see them, it's so much easier to say, yo, let's have a catch up because they, they realize you're proactive and they would love to connect with you on that basis. You're not like jumping out of the blue saying, hey, I haven't spoken to you in two years. I know I've been a ghost, but can we catch up? Mm. They see you're active. So be active and it makes everything easier. Last tip on that is for networking, try and have a cadence. So cadence means okay, I'm going to make sure once a month I reach out to this person or once every three months. And then that way you know there's like a regular check-in. Some people just do it based upon life updates and they give people life updates over email or over call. But try and have that cadence unless you'll get to two years and you'll feel shame. We all feel it a bit and you're like, it's been a long time, bro. I'm not sure I can, can send this message, but it's okay. I think if you have a cadence, it, it helps a lot. And as Christina said, if you say, after, at the end of your conversation, when next can we meet? Mm -hmm. It means you don't have to think about it, you don't have to follow up, yeah. it's in the calendar already. Yeah. Yeah? Less awkward. Exactly, <laughs> less awkward. Final question. Yeah, someone just waiting the microphone. for. Is there a mic over there? Do we show that one? What would you outline as the key personality traits that got you to where you are today? Or that you'd say to engineers that are starting out now? One person to answer the question, please. <laughs> um, so I'd say it's actually the softer skills that have gotten me to where I am today, and that's where the point that I showed you where my career suddenly kind of developed and I started doing a lot more things and 
doing a lot more um, kind of out of my comfort zone. So it's a lot of communication, a lot of working with people, softer skills that people don't actually think about rather than the technical side of things. And RS doesn't call them soft skills, they call them super skills. Because <laughs> that's what they are. They're so super skills. Find a man called Wayne here somewhere. After, Wayne, are you? Put your hand up. Wait, so but, if you want to know about personality traits that get you places, speak to that man. And I, on that point, so we've got two birthdays. <laughs> Wayne's birthday. Yeah. And Mo's birthday. So we're going to sing happy birthday. <laughs> I don't know what name you're going to go for, whether it's going to be Wayne or Mo, but say one of them and we'll make it work. Yeah? Does that make sense? All right. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. I'm going to say Wayne. Happy birthday, dear Wayne. Happy birthday to you. Sure. Cool. One last, yeah, one, one last. last cherry on top of the cake. If that last question of yours is something that you actually want to learn more about, there's one book I'd recommend, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a classic, and it will teach you everything you need to know about personality traits that get you far in life. How to Win Friends and Influence People. It does what it says on the tin. Amazing. Well, I think they were both incredible. Mo and Christina, thank you, thank you for joining me. Thank you.